I stopped by just to tell you I love you. And since you're not at home, I'm writing it to you. Elena Poniatowska, El Recado. Hello again. Let's continue our Servantine journey through history's greatest novel. In chapter 39, Trifaldi finishes the story of Antonomasia and Clavijo. Queen Maguncia was so upset by her daughter's marriage that within three days we buried her. Here Cervantes makes comical use of understatement when Sancho responds, without a doubt, she must have died. Sancho goes on to point out that Queen Maguncia had no reason to be upset. He adopts Don Quixote's meritocratic and humanistic view that knights like Don Clavijo can become kings and emperors. Don Quixote applauds his view. You reason correctly, Sancho, for a knight errant, if given two fingers of luck, is very nearly qualified to be the greatest prince on earth. Trifaldi returns to her story by quoting an abbreviated verse from Book 2 of Virgil's Aeneid, Quistalia fando temperet a lacrimis, which means who, hearing such things, could hold back their tears. This alludes to Aeneas' telling of the fall of Troy at the court of Dido in Carthage, and it reminds the informed reader of the story of the Trojan horse. Next, Trifaldi tells how the giant Malambruno appeared at Maguncia's funeral atop a wooden horse and then transformed the respective lovers into a bronze she-monkey and a frightful crocodile of an unknown metal. He also placed between them a metal plaque inscribed with a prophecy. They will not recover their original form until the valiant Manchegan comes to do battle with me in single combat. This double metamorphosis, which awaits a prophetic act of heroism in order to be undone, recalls the basic plot device of Cervantes' novella El Coloquio de los Perros, the colloquy of the dogs. Note also that Malambruno is associated with the Moorish or Turkish enemy when he threatens to behead Trifaldi with an enormous cutlass, a broad and enormous scimitar. Did you know, as part of their ideological propaganda, the Hasburgs claimed to be, and indeed represented themselves as, the last descendants of Aeneas. The final detail of Trifaldi's story is hilarious, but also symbolic on a number of levels. First, Malambruno's misogyny links him to Sancho. Trifaldi tells how the giant sorcerer had brought before him all the duenas of the palace, who were those you see here, and she accuses him of having exaggerated our guilt and reviled the character of duenas, their evil schemes and most wicked plots. Quixotic mission. Into what does Mambruno transform Antonio Macia and Don Clavijo? A. Effigies of a Morris and a Christian. B. Avatars of a serpent and a pig. C. Statues of a she-monkey and a crocodile. Correct answer, C. Statues of a she-monkey and a crocodile. Malambruno then casts his ultimate enchantment, which makes all the women of the court of Candaya grow beards. Note how Trifaldi's use of perspective makes everyone in her audience experience the sudden growth of a beard. We all sensed that the pores of our cheeks opened and that we were being pricked all over by the points of needles. Then we raised our hands to our faces and we found ourselves in the manner that you will now see. On another level, these beards have a racial connotation like Eugenio's spotted she-goat at the end of part one. The suffering duena and the other duenas lifted the veils that covered them, revealing faces completely covered by beards, some blonde, some black, some white, and some of mixed race. One last detail suggests that this story is an allegory for the Christian Moor conflict. Trifaldi's final lament echoes the Cid's daughters when they pleaded for martyrdom in the epic poem of Spain. Would that heaven had rather made him cut off our heads with his enormous scimitar. Everyone is shocked and Trifaldi concludes with an hilarious hyperbole. Where can a bearded duena go? with her face turned forest. The Countess then appears to faint, and the chapter ends. That's all for now. What do you think will happen next? 
don't miss it. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.